In my quest to get a sense of the lives of mathematicians from the past, I had previously visited the John Dee site in Mortlake. I'll link that video in the box and in the description. John Dee's property in Mortlake is now occupied by modern flats and other buildings unrelated to him. So in order to get a better sense of the time in which he lived, I went to the Hospital of St. Cross in Winchester, which is about an hour's train ride outside London. The Hospital of St. Cross is not a hospital as we think of them today, but rather a place of hospitality, which included providing housing for a dozen or so men within its walls, men who were too frail to work, and food was provided there daily for up to a hundred people who came to its gates. It's known as an almshouse of noble poverty, and it is the oldest charitable institution in England. It was founded in the early 12th century, so it had been around for well over 400 years when Dee asked Elizabeth I to give him the position of master here. It's a large complex including two quadrangles, one between the outer gate and the porter's lodge beneath the tower, and one between the tower and the church. It still serves the purpose of providing lodging for older men of small means. Here you see the lodgings on the right and one of the brothers playing croquet on the grounds. If I qualified to live here, I would do it. I find it breathtakingly beautiful and I would love to live in a place where I could pretend I was living in the 1500s. Though I must admit that I would appreciate the modern upgrades to the lodgings of electricity and running water. This is the master's garden. I visited in March 2023 and would love to see it someday in full bloom. At the back of the garden is a stew pond, which could also be called a fish pond, which served the purpose of providing meals and perhaps still does, I'm not sure. You can see St. Catherine's Hill in the distance beyond the wall. And between the wall and St. Catherine's Hill is Itchen Meadow, some part of which belongs to St. Cross. In 1592, D, age 65, wrote something he called a compendious rehearsal in which he listed all that he had accomplished during the previous 50 years of his life and all that had been stolen from him and especially the despoiling of his Mortlake home and library while he was away on the continent with Edward Kelly. This 43-page long document is addressed to Queen Elizabeth I. In it, he reminds her of all the service he has rendered her. He requests the Mastership of St. Cross, and he explains in detail why he wishes to live here as master. It was large enough to accommodate his family, his servants, and the scholarly visitors he entertained. It was near the glass houses of Sussex, which would allow him to oversee workmanship on instruments and glassworks that he ordered. It was near the south coast of England, which, as Dee writes, would be a more commodious place for the secret arrival of special men, some of which men would be loath to be seen or heard of publicly in court or city. It would also mean Winchester College was at hand for the excellent education of his four sons. He really wanted to have this place, and the title of the chapter in which he lists his reasons is Sundry Good Reasons Why I Rather Desire St. Cross Than Any Other Living, Fee, or Dignity of Like Value to Be Had in Any Other Place. The grounds are extensive. I imagine if Elizabeth had granted this to him, that he would have constructed even more buildings on the property to house his alchemical experiments, his library, his scrying sessions, and so on. Between the Porter's Lodge and the church is an ambulatory. The church feels more like a cathedral than a chapel. Another reason Dee listed for wanting to be master here was the respect he had for the divine service 
and his desire to train up his children and family with that most Christian exercise of prayer. I spent so much time during my visit enjoying the master's garden and this church that closing time snuck up on me by surprise. The person locking the doors was gracious enough to allow me to visit the brethren's hall before he finished. So I headed out from the church and across the quad. The entrance to the brethren's hall is just a bit left of the tower. This space was to serve to feed 13 brethren and the 100 men who arrived at the gate. The master would have dined with the brethren on the raised dais across the room. The stairs lead up to the tower in which the master and his family lived. Above the entry to the hall is a gallery. I was moving quickly at this point to allow for things to be locked up for the day, and after a short look into the kitchen, I headed out down the hall, back out to the quad, then underneath the tower, the sight of which really made me wish Elizabeth had granted Dee's request, as I can totally imagine him living here. So anyway, from there, back out the front gate and on into town. I spent some time in town as well. This included seeing Winchester College, which Dee had listed as a reason why he wanted the Mastership of St. Cross. A couple of medieval city gates are still standing, including King's Gate, seen here. Cheney Court near King's Gate contains Tudor-era buildings. The cathedral, built in the 11th century, is even older than St. Cross and would have been well known to Dee had he moved here, and perhaps even though he didn't. But again, even though I'd been to the site of Dee's former home in Mortlake, visiting St. Cross in Winchester gave me a much better feeling of what things were like in his lifetime. And even though Elizabeth did not grant his request for mastership here, I really sensed a feeling of John Dee in this place, where Dee so much wanted to live.